Cauldron Quest is a game by Peaceable Kingdom and following the philosophy of this publisher it is a game for young children and it is cooperative in nature. In this uh, game the theme is a fantasy one, it's based on magic, there is an evil wizard that is trying to prevent you from making a magic potion, I guess the potion is one that will allow you to defeat the wizard. It can be played by, well, really pretty much any number of players, I guess, um, but uh, it is recommended to be played uh, with uh, two, three or four players. It can also be played solitaire if your child wants it. Um, I usually play it in two players, me and my daughter Amelia, who is five, and sometimes my daughter Louise also helps us out. But uh, the game is a little too complicated for her to really get it. Now, there are six possible ingredients that may go in your magic potion that you're trying to build, so, to create. So at the beginning of the game, you uh, shuffle these six elements uh, together, you draw three random ones and you place them there. And you see there are some tokens here that kind of look like... Uh, the cups and they show ingredients at the bottom. So there is six of them, so only three of these cups which are shuffled and placed face down at the beginning of the game represent the things that you actually want. So you have to figure out ways of flipping these face up and check if it's if they have the things that you want. For example here with the bat swing that matches that one. This would be a good one, but I don't know where the good ones are at the beginning of the game. There are two sets of dice. Uh, black dice, which are traditional six-sided dice, and then these other special dice with two symbols. One is the cup, and one is the wizard. And the other one has uh, numbers, uh, three or four, and lightning bolts on it. Each turn the uh, active player rolls the dice and suppose that you get this combination here which is this symbol and a number which can be three or four then you simply get to move one of these cups whichever you like by the number of spaces. Cups move on these tracks and they can move towards the center they can also move on this track here which is where the wizard will be moving. So the wizard can be pretty dangerous because if you are here and the wizard reaches you or I should say reaches the cup then the cup goes back to the beginning. So I roll this I roll this and I have cup and four. One, two, three, four. Done. This would be a good one because I'm right behind the wizard. It may take a while before he comes and catches me. If you roll these, this combination here, you can try to cast a spell. Actually, I'll talk about that later. Uh, wizard plus a number, then the wizard moves that number of spaces. One, two, three for this combination. Moving that direction, starting from there. If you get this combination, this is the worst combination that you can get in the game. Because you need to draw a tile from the stack here. These tiles have symbols that match the symbols that you find here. Each of the paths where these cups are uh, is marked by a symbol like this one. For example, here we had the owl and there is an owl there. So we move it there because we did that. Why is that bad? Uh, because alas, your cups cannot move past that under normal circumstances. So if I'm here, I may have to trouble here and try to get here. But then maybe I'll get another path blocker. These are called the path blockers. Well, this path blocker here goes there, luckily enough. And these path blockers are important because they are blocking the path, hence the name, and also they are signaling how good you're doing in the game. When all path blockers are on the board, you lose the game. So you're trying to get the three right ingredients in there before all paths are blocked. There's also a special token that can be used once in the game. When you spend it, you can remove a path blocker. So it's good to open a path, but it is also good so you can delay the end of the game a little bit. But there was one combination of symbols that we did not talk about, which is this one, which is when you try to cast a spell. And to cast spells, you use these. There are three spells, so one is based on even results. When you are rolling dice to cast a spell, you can roll up to three times, re-roll any number of your dice, but again up to three times. 
but before you start rolling you have to declare the kind of spell that you're trying to you're trying to uh, cast one is based on even results and you can cast the spell if you declare that you were trying to and you have even numbers at the end and we call that even Steven with the even Steven spell you can look under one of the cups you flip it face up this is very important because again remember you need the right ones and only cups that are face up can actually be moved into the cauldron in the middle the other one is another spell you announce it you try to cast it by rolling dice is based on odd results and my daughters and i call this odd todd and if you get odd todd you can switch the location the placement of any two cups so actually it may perfectly happen that a path is blocked and there is a symbol that you don't need for example in this case that would be the mushroom and if i cast the odd todd spell i can switch the two of them so now a symbol that they really need and want is close to that place and maybe later i'll move it and that's good there is another spell which is called 12 we haven't figured out a way of, uh, of rhyming that 12, delve. Anyhow, when you announce that you want to cast a spell that will be triggered by rolling exactly 12, you need to roll exactly 12. Ta -da! And when you do so, then you can move any potion, any cup by six spaces. And when you do so, you can move past you can move through a wizard through the wizard and or through the path blockers so it's a particularly good and powerful movement but alas you get it only when you roll 12 on the three dice so you simply keep rolling dice moving the wizard the wizard also blocks movement and again if the wizard touches you the uh, cup the potion has to go back to the closest initial space on any of the tracks so you're moving your potions early on, you are casting the spell that allows you to find your potions because you need to know which ones are the right ones. You advance them, you find them, sometimes you switch them, you use other spells. But the idea is that you're trying to get all of the three right ingredients in the central space before the game is over and, and the game is over when all the path blockers are there. If all the path blockers are on the board, then the game is over and you lose the game. If you place all of the ingredients on in the center of the board, in the middle of the board, before the path blockers are all there, then the players, the team, collectively win the game. So, Cauldron Quest. Uh, it's a nice game. My daughter really enjoys it. Uh, my five-year-old. The three-year-old also enjoys it, but she doesn't really understand the game. She enjoys looking at the components. I can't really say that she appreciates the design, per se. And this is interesting because this is a little more of an advanced game by Peaceable Kingdom. Peaceable Kingdom does uh, make games also for three or five-year-olds, and my youngest daughter has played games by them that she could definitely get. She could see um, the ideas behind, not just moving things mechanically. One such game that also my younger daughter can play, and that reminds me of Cauldron Quest a little bit, is uh, Mermaid Island. In Mermaid Island, you have a random element that, just like here, will affect things. But Mermaid Island, they found that the random element was a little too heavy after a while. Uh, some games were just too easy and some games impossible to beat and some games just right. Here there is a random element which will make some games absolutely impossible to win. It just happens. Four path blockers in the first couple of rolls there isn't much of a chance that that the players will win. On the other hand, as opposed to Mermaid Island, I didn't really find games that were all that super easy. Because even if the wizard never moves, you never get a path blocker, you still have some steps to go through, you still have some decisions to make, you still have to decide when to use the spells and which kind of spells to use and which cups to move. I just found that the moving parts are more interesting and by moving parts of course I do not mean the pieces that move on the board but the mechanics, the cogs of the game, the, the, the mechanics behind the design 
that will force your, your child to switch gears uh, and to work around different problems, different elements in different ways. Because you have the numerical factors related to the dice and you teach your kids very basic concepts about statistics and probabilities. Um, but then you have the spatial element, which is super interesting as the kids move the cups and they have to decide if a certain cup will go real fast and close to the center, but maybe then that is not the right cup but with a certain spell that allows you to switch things so that can still be good or they want to move several cups before they get a chance of looking under them so that in case uh, uh, then when they start looking under the cups uh, more or less they know that the right ones wherever they are uh, they will be already halfway to the central cauldron uh, and of course, it's also a matter of figuring out which areas are safest on the board uh, based on the position of the wizard. My daughter, my five-year-old Amelia, absolutely enjoys this game, much more so than Mermaid Island. I believe Mermaid Island, after playing Cauldron Quest, may really be a little too simple and linear for her. Um, and Teaching the game wasn't hard at all, even to teach it to a five-year-old. I thought, I don't know, you had the movement part and then you had to teach them the spells. Super simple, super easy. My daughter got it immediately and I think that most children will not, even, or even of that age or on five, will not have any problem. Uh, it was so easy for her to understand it that I guess maybe even a slightly chi younger child could make it, maybe four. Three seems to be too young. Uh, but definitely a little younger than the recommended age of six, recommended on the box. I think a child even a little younger could could play it. As for other games by Pissable Kingdom, this is a game that looks very good. The components are beautiful, colorful, sturdy, durable. They can take a lot of love and intense action from children and still be perfectly usable and good looking. Uh, my daughter, my daughter Amelia really enjoys it. She has been asking to play this game several times. Sometimes we play a game a couple of times. Uh, she loves it, then goes on the shelf and she doesn't remember about it for a while, but she has been asking about this one, which is a really good sign. And, and I like playing this game. There are games uh, I always love playing with my daughters, but all other things being equal, the daughters always being super awesome, just the same. Uh, sometimes the experience is better or less fun because of the game. And this is a game that per se is fun to play with your kids. To play with your kids is always good, but some games are more make it even more fun than others. And this one, uh, I can't say that this strategy is absolutely astounding from the adult perspective, but even for me, actually, there are enough things to keep me more interested than when I'm playing other children's games with my daughters. Actually, my daughter and I can talk strategy, and sometimes the, the best strategy is not obvious even to me, and so there's some interesting back and forth as we talk and try to figure things out. There are a couple of interesting puzzles that can emerge from this design. So Cauldron Quest, really simple for an adult, uh, engaging for a child game by uh, by Peaceable Kingdom. I enjoyed pretty much all of the games by them that I play, but this to me uh, is, per is a particularly good one, holds a special place um, for me and especially for my daughter among the games by Peaceable Kingdom that we have played and that we own.